uh, so we have uh, Juta here today. She will be talking about uh, uh, a very important topic uh, that is taking responsibility of our carbon uh, footprint. Thank you so much for the introduction and welcome everyone to this, yeah, as, as you said, really super important session, at least I think. Um, I want to talk about the, the topic that the planet really sends an SOS. And I imagine that some of you know me as a speaker, as an author of, well, the many books that you see there, like, um, for example, the first one, now I have to check out, I think. This one is my first one, that, which was in, on Scaling Agile, and I published that back in 2004. I will talk a little bit, but only a little bit, about the latest one, which is Company-Wide Agility, um, dubbed as Bossa Nova as well. But um, on the other hand, this is mainly a really new topic. And as I said, it really is to my heart. And what that means, well, I want to share a little bit about me that you might not know. You, again, you might know me as author, speaker, but you might not know, for example, that back in the 80s, well, I'm, I have a few years under my belt here. <laughs> I protested against acid rain and forest dieback and unfortunately without much success because just in May, a new report on the, um, on the forest has been released and there they found out that 80% of all trees in Germany, this is my home country, are uh, actually um, damaged. And this picture that I'm sharing, here's a picture that I took from a hike, which is close by where I'm living. And really, if you go there, you see like almost all trees are damaged or even dead already. The other thing is that I'm also a passionate scuba diver. And as, a, as that passion brings with it is that I'm really concerned about various forecasts. For example, by 2050, it is projected that there will be more plastic in the sea than fish. And already by 2030, people project that probably all coral reefs are damaged. And so this really concerns me. Moreover, another thing you might not know that next to that I'm an engineer and I'm in software and, and doing all this agile stuff for many, many years. I'm also trained as a pollution control commissioner on ecological environmentalism. However, I, I, I'm certified in that, I'm trained in that. It's been a long time ago that I did that and I never really practiced that. But this is kind of the background that I'm bringing. Now, before I start into the topic, I would like to know from you, what do you think connects agile and sustainability? And I just put the uh, link to the mentee also in the chat, so it's easier for you to get there. But if you just go there, um, like to menti.com and you use that code 45720, one, five, six, and you just put in a word kind of how you see the connection between sustainability and agile. And if you don't see any connection, then this is fine as well. Then you might say exactly this. And um, because I'm a bit uncertain if the refresh on the slide works, I want to see if, um, if maybe it works better here and the direct connection. So again, if you go, yeah, see, we have already not sure if there's a connection, which is really a valid thing. Then um, responding to change is, is a thing here. Reducing waste, you could even think of maybe Kanban, Muda, avoiding waste and so on. It's perhaps more on a meta level, but still then reaction time that might be needed. I, I wait a little bit more, maybe um, some of you get some other ideas. We have four people responding so far. 
So if you go there um, to Menticom, and I believe there was one person joining late, here's also the direct link again, and perhaps we get a few more answers. And again, I'm not sure is absolutely fine too, or seeing no connection. Sustainable pace, here is the word even that that's making that connection. Fail fast, learn fast, those go together. Then outcomes, um, oh, and responding to change. So it's it's a lot about, yeah, change, it seems. Sustainable pace are standing out more now. This is kind of the thing that you're seeing. Now I wonder, did I miss something else? Complexity domain and navigating uncertainty. Those two definitely go together. And um, for sure, this is a, a huge thing that actually that we can bring to the field. Um, what else is a positive impact and value to the world? System thinking might also go to one way of addressing complexity. So thank you so much. This is um, excellent. And you can keep answering this. We will um, keep your answers in here. And I would like to, well, first of all, because hmm, because that question was honestly a bit a little bit unfair, I didn't really define sustainability yet. So therefore, I would like to provide a definition. So what is actually sustainability? And there is like one very general definition that's pretty well known. It comes from the Puntland Commission, um, and it's probably the oldest definition that's out there for sustainability. And at the core, it says, whatever we do right now for fulfilling our needs, we have to keep in mind that future generations are also enabled to meet their own needs so that we are never living on the cost of future generations. So this is a kind of um, the, the most foundational, perhaps also basic, but super important definition of sustainability. There is, however, it's also very coarse grain. There's also a much finer grain one, which is the another one from the United Nations. So the Pruntel Commission was also United Nations. So this one is kind of known as well. It defines, um, it is defined by the 17 sustainable development goals. And you see it's talking about, for example, here, um, no poverty, zero hunger, but also like my scuba diving passion thing, life below water, life on land, all kinds of things. And some people say that, well, maybe the Printed Commission's definition is way too coarse grain and the 17 sustainable development goal it might be to fine grain, especially if we think about what we are doing. We are developing software and how does it connect to us? Therefore, the definition that I'm using and I find the most helpful is the one that's defined on three pillars. And here I'm showing already the first pillar, which is called social or sometimes to refer to people as well. And it looks at aiming for equity, health and livability. The second pillar is the thing that we often have mostly in mind if we think of sustainability, which is the environment or planet. So it's about protecting the planet. The third one is the one that probably is most often ignored. It's economic or profit. What it's about is it's like we are, should aim for improving the lives and prospects of everyone everywhere. And sustainability is really defined by all of these three pillars. So it sits really in the middle and this more holistic approach. Now, already I want to kind of peek at some of the things because you, and, and we'll get more into details later, but for example, the social people aspect, that really also looks, if we're talking about equity, of course, also about diversity and inclusion. And we do talk about that in Agile as well, right? So this is 
kind of the, the broad definition that I like to go with. And um, it's nothing really new or whatever. It is basically um, capturing or categorizing those 17 sustainable development goals in those three different pillars. Now, okay, we are talking about software here. And very often what people think is that software actually comes to the rescue. And that is true. For example, with ebooks, we are saving trees. So with now having this online conference that nobody's traveling anymore, anywhere. So we are saving also uh, or, or minimizing our carbon footprint. Then also, if you think about various algorithms like on supply chain or water management or whatever it is, often software that makes it more efficient. So that's very true. However, you could also ask, really, software to the rescue? And software also has a downside. And there are various forecasts. One of them is that, that one that's mentioned the most often, which is a, a forecast stating that by 2030, that's not too far away, IT will actually consume 21% of the overall energy consumption. So this is quite something. So it's not that we are kind of um, only coming to the rescue. We also come with a carbon footprint and the V is of course in quotes, so whatever we are doing on IT. That's one thing. Another thing is actually that whole topic about electronic waste. And um, there is a, an electronic waste monitor produced every five years also by the United Nations. The last one was produced in or created in 2020. So it looked up to the year 2019. And what you see there is that in 2019, 53.6 million tons of electronic waste were generated worldwide. And it's a plus from compared to the last monitor, e-waste monitor, it's a plus of 21%, which is quite a lot. And yes, you could think of, well, this is hardware and aren't we, most of us actually doing something in software. That's, that's very true. But if I think of, for example, here, my phone, very often I am buying a new phone or any other kind of hardware because the software is not supported, is not supporting the hardware anymore. So the, the software doesn't really run well on the hardware. Therefore, I throw out the hardware, although it's not broken, but because the software isn't really running in an efficient, effective way anymore. And so it is, again, IT and software that's maybe having that responsibility of creating that electronic waste, So, which is us. I would now like to dive into those three pillars, remember, like, environmental, social, and economic, and uh, provide a few examples of what that means if we are looking in IT. And some examples are positive, others are negative. We start with a maybe positive example. So in the environmental um, spectrum, the thing is that most of the software that we are creating is now running in the cloud. And let me, first of all, make this very clear, this is good because in the cloud per se, software is running way more efficient and with a smaller carbon footprint than if we would host the software ourselves. So this is good. However, very often we are not looking into um, how is the cloud platform our software is actually running on? How is that really, um, running, what's the carbon footprint of it? And there is uh, like the positive example that's actually Google. Google started already in 2007 
to trying to become carbon neutral. And then in 2017, so 10 years later, they made their next big step and they still keep working on it. So they aim for being 24-7 uh, running on carbon-free energy by 2030. So this is good news. And actually, for quite some time, it was really the Google Cloud Platform only aiming for that. So I would think like two or three years ago, not many more were looking into that topic. However, luckily, this has changed. So all of the cloud platforms are now aiming on that and, and have seen that this is a topic. However, a big problem is, and this is also with Google, although it's here like the positive example, you might have seen here that uh, this information comes from a Google white paper and they are releasing um, those white papers also at various times. However, the problem is they are not making their data transparent. So I know that from the um, Ministry of Environment, environmentalism, what a difficult term, um, in Germany, they are trying to validate that report, that white paper for quite some years from Google and are asking for the data and they are not getting it. So one of our responsibility is actually here, on the one hand, really when we look for an infrastructure also, looking at the carbon footprint of that infrastructure. And second, on the other hand, that we also ask for more transparency, that we create a bit more pressure on the companies that they are really making their stuff transparent. Um, one disclaimer here for all of the examples that I'm giving. So here, Google is more like the positive example, but maybe not so much because they're not making the data transparent. However, my point is here for both the positive and negative examples, it's always the case that none of the companies is like, or yeah, is positive only or negative only. So I just picked some examples that speak to that topic. Um, well, the, that we have that responsibility is, has also been seen by the ACM, the Association of Computing Machinery, and the former editor-in-chief of the CACM, um, and ACM actually is one of the biggest um, um, organizations on IT, started in the US, but it's now an international um, organization. And... Andrew Cheen, again, the former editor-in-chief of the CACM, the magazine of the organization, said, it is time for the computing community to face up to computing's growing environmental impact and take responsibility for it. So it's us. So that was my example on environmentalism. Now let's go to um, the next example, which is um, economic. And my example here is Chef. Chef is a cloud software. I can imagine that some of you know it or use it um, for your, your systems that you are creating. And Chef actually is both, so it's the open source cloud software, but it's also a company that's called Chef that has contracts with various clients and serving them with their cloud software called Chef. So Chef has these two dimensions. And Chef, the company, had a contract with ICE. ICE stands for Immigration Customs Enforcement. And people found out, that's a few years ago, I think it was in 2018, people found out that the software Chef is used by ICE to actually manage the deportation camps at the Mexican border. I'm not sure if you heard about that, but uh, so it was at least in Europe, it was big news um, where um, the, the, the deportation camps at the, at the border to Mexico, for example, was used for separating the kids from their parents and really very bad stuff. And when the developers found out about that, they said like, well, 
our intention was never that the system will be used that way. Remember that this pillar was defined improving the lives and prospects of everyone everywhere? For sure, this didn't happen here. And so they protested. And for quite some time, nothing happened until the moment when one of the developers actually said, well, it's open source. What about if I delete all my contributions to the software? And so he did. And that created so much pressure that this headline that you see on that slide was really created that Chef expired the contract with ICE. So um, again, so the, the thing is, especially I think often, well, I'm not sure if it's really especially, but I, I think so in actual where we often think, well, the most important thing is to make the client happy. And well, we do, but then we don't take a second look what is the client actually doing with the system? And I think we should, at least at times, take that look as well. Um, Larry Fink from BlackRock, also BlackRock is not only good, um, said in his open letter to the CEOs on, in 2018 that society is actually demanding that companies, both public and private, serve a social purpose to prosper over time Every company must not only deliver financial performance, but also show how it makes a positive contribution to society. So this is, again, something that we need to do. I want to share also an example on the social pillar. Remember, it was on like um, equity, for example, diversity and inclusion. And here's a wonderful example that I found on Twitter. It's um, where Shirley Wu wanted to create an account and she couldn't because the last name was expecting at least three characters. And sometimes we just don't think that far. Another example also found on Twitter is those two guys had a video conversation and then they decided to use a virtual background. And what happened? Well, um, the video system didn't recognize the face of the dark skinned person to be a face. And you know what? I don't think that any of those software teams really did that on purpose. There was no intent that Shirley Wu can create an account or that um, dark-skinned person can use a virtual background. I think the problem is very often we in our teams are too homogeneous and we just don't think about other perspectives, other people. And one of the things, maybe this is already one of my tips, is well, very often we come up with personas in Agile where we think about who's our target client, the main client that we are aiming for with that system. And my recommendation is please at times think about the complete opposite of that target client crew because you might miss something and really exclude people from using your system which doesn't mean that you're creating, you still have your target persona in mind, but please at times take a look at kind of other people. So um, I had uh, a couple of years ago, a podcast on the subject on diversity and inclusion with Jeremy Kriegel. Some of you might know him because he's also big told in actual India. And there we were talking about this and then I threw out like a sentence on that topic and he said, you know what, I think this has to be Eckstein's law. And since then I'm running around and saying, here is Eckstein's law. So take this with a little smirk here. So the law is that I believe an organization produces a design that reflects the organization's biases. So it is kind of, as you might know, a little bit derived from Conway's law, but the point is very often we look for people that are like us. And because of that, we have just more like a singular perspective and not a broad view of perspectives. Okay, 
So we had the definition of sustainability. I also um, um, yeah, brought some examples from the three pillars, but perhaps you're thinking, so what does this have to do with Agile now really? Well, except for perhaps the examples that I gave, like the personas or thinking um, beyond making the client happy. Well, actually, there is a deeper connection. And I know some of you said when I asked that first question, like, well, I don't really see a connection, which is, I said, a valid thing. However, we made a promise. And if we are looking at the two biggest organizations in the Agile world, for example, the Scrum Alliance and the Agile Alliance. So the Scrum Alliance says that we are on a mission to create Agile workplaces that are joyful, prosperous, and there you go, sustainable. The Agile Alliance has changed that uh, a few times. And what they are saying now is, well, what's kind of what they're doing for their members is through the last two de decades, members like you have helped make work more effective, humane, and sustainable by applying the Agile mindset and methods. And by the way, the Agile Alliance even um, elaborates on this and then says, well, just making the world work, the work more sustainable, they really mean it in the sense of the three pillars, so social, environmental, and economic. Now, this is the one thing. The other thing is, when I worked uh, together with John Buck on my latest book, The Company-Wide Agility with Beyond Budgeting, Open Space, and so Circusy, that was an over, um, we realize that, well, once a company says they are agile, or even it starts in a smaller scale, when a team says we are agile, it comes with an expectation. It comes with an expectation, which is in the sense of sustainability, although it might not really be stated, really. And for example, if a team says we are agile and then somebody finds out they are not inclusive, people would say, well, I thought you're agile. And similarly, if a company says we are agile and then people find out they're not paying fairly, same thing. People would say, I thought you're agile. And that's why John and I took a look at the core principles of agile, transparency, self-organization, constant customer focus, and continuous learning, and looked into what does that really mean if we... Uh, looking at it from a sustainability perspective or what does it mean if we are fulfilling that perhaps hidden expectations? For example, for transparency is about making the company's actions transparent both internally and externally. So that would speak, for example, for Google to make those data also transparent. Self-organization where we look more into that we are actually a uh, and just a node of a global network. And we are responsible for the environment we are living in. And we are creating also that environment together with other companies and societal institutions. If we look at constant customer focus, then actually let me translate that for you right away. The way I use that the most often right now when I work with teams is saying like, oh, if we look at that feature, what about if the planet would be a stakeholder? And so regarding the planet also as a customer, as a stakeholder, that often opens up completely different um, discussion. Then we have continuous learning, where it's about learning continuously from and with society to make the whole world a better place. So this is our responsibility. And perhaps now is the time where you wonder Okay, I got that, Yuta, but now what can I really do? And there are several things you can do. And it starts with like using sustainability by Agile. That means that we are using Agile practices and mindset to help solve the climate crisis, to improve sustainability. And there is a, I have an example here from a colleague of mine, Nicole Benilos, um, who used her skills for increasing sustainability by acting as a scrum master 
for an organization that's called Hack Your Future, originally created in the Netherlands. I believe they are now uh, available at in different countries, but there are also other organizations doing stuff like that. And she served as a scrum master for refugees. And the idea for, of Hack Your Future is that refugees have a possibility to show their skills, their, especially their IT skills to get a job. And in this case, those refugees also created a food saver app. So it's like double-sided, really good. And Nicole just provided her actual practices, mindset, skills to help them to just do that. So this is sustainability by agile. What you can also do, and I want to dive a little bit deeper perhaps into this as well as Using, thinking of sustainability in Agile, which is that we use sustainability to guide our actions and outcomes in Agile development. And one example could be that your definition of done also looks at the energy consumption of your system, that when you deliver your next story, that at least the energy consumption <laughs> doesn't increase. Maybe it even gets smaller. I would like you to now take a survey. So I have here that um, QR code, but also want to uh, share perhaps the link in, um, in the chat, um, where I would like to ask you to take that survey so we see where we are actually standing right now with sustainability and agile. And um, so it's, it's a really a quick thing. There are not too many questions, but it would be wonderful if you would start and answer those questions so we get an idea what is actually happening right now with sustainability. And so again, I ask you to go there, take the survey. I know that it takes a little bit um, to do that. And let's see. And by the way, so I, I made that much smaller, that survey. Normally, it has way more questions, and I will provide you the link later on so you can use it with your team and learn where are you and hopefully start having a conversation on that super important topic. But maybe now I should shut up and <laughs> let you answer the survey. And so... Again, we only had three questions on each of, each of the spectrums, environmental, economic, and social. We see um, that, well, um, social seems to be the thing that um, has the highest values. Maybe we first look at the craft so you see it here also social goes really further out than environmental and this is not a surprise because this is kind of the thing we are starting at right now only and perhaps i want to first go back and let's see we do another refresh perhaps we have a new data point in oh two more data points very good and I would also like to see how far away are we from each other or are we more in agreement? So what we see here, for example, let's first look also here at the, oops, yeah, at the social part. That's actually good that we, I did like this is that for the first question, the team prevents discrimination, disrespecting or targeting of team members we are really much in agreement here in this group. So most people voted four or five. Here in the next question, which says like we, or statement, we continue to work to prevent bad actors from accessing or using any stored user data. There's quite some agreement. However, there's like perhaps one, one outlier, um, but 
it, it's kind of all of those questions are quite together. So this is good. And it is also, which means it says something where we are standing. Now, if I look on the other hand here on the environmental sector, then we see the answers are all over the place. Let's look at this. So one says, the team monitors the hardware utilization of the product, both in use as well as while idle. Then we have three saying the team monitor, uh, the three saying it's a four. Um, then we have one saying it's more false than true that we are doing this and two saying this is completely false. We are not doing this. So the, the, the thing, what you see in this, heat map is how far are we spreading? And again, here we are closer together. Let me do another refresh to see if there are more data in perhaps. No, we are seven. Okay, good. Um, let's perhaps also take a look in the economic spectrum and perhaps let's take a, a radar for that. And it is like the, the one top, topic, the team response prompted when security gaps, vulnerabilities become known, that's quite high. It's also not a surprise because security is a topic we are looking at for quite some time now. And it's not so new. It might be surprising that it, this is really part of sustainability. Well, because we want to improve the lives and prospect of everyone everywhere, and we don't want to do any harm, right? And this is what it is. Then the thing that's really low here is, um, well, is it? No, this is, yeah, which is uh, the team knows which features are really used. Actually, this is something that's quite typical that I'm seeing that often, well, we, we get asked that this is super important, let's build those features that those stories have to get delivered. But then later on, nobody really checks if they are really used. So we might create more waste than we actually know. Um, let's take perhaps a quick uh, other look into whatever, maybe the holistic, maybe the holistic would be interesting as well. So the thing we are highest is uh, the product service contributes to create a social, economic, and environmental balance. Well, this is really great. No, I'm really interested. Let, let me quickly go back here and see um, that heat map. So that was the thing. So we have two saying true, three saying more true than false, and then we have one and one. Okay, but it's not that fast spread. This is interesting, very good. Um, and also, um, ah, this one was the one we were looking to. There we are really close together. That's excellent, actually. And then we see in the, um, perhaps we leave here, um, we prioritize the planet as one of the stakeholders. I guess that's a really a new thing. And that's why it's all over the place. So we have answers in all categories here. Let me go back. And one of the things that you also can look at, and I, again, I give you the link so you can use that with your team and look where you are standing, is um, you see also like, um, the highest scores or where you have the biggest deviation or key opportunities. So this might be interesting. And I know before we are getting all nervous, I'm going back and um, want to share with you, like, why are we doing this? The thing is, looking at sustainability and taking that responsibility. So what does that mean for us? So what, what can we do is actually it means that we change our conversations really for increasing sustainability. And I know I use up almost all the time. So I want to thank you here. want to provide some links. Here the Bitly link with actual sustainability is the one um, that you can use with your team 
and answering those questions. And again, there are way more questions than just those. And um, you can use that and find out what are actually the next questions you want to ask and what kind of dialogue you want to get started with. And I want to share also that link here in the chat. So thank you. And I'm really curious if there are any questions. And I know we are out of time almost. We have one more minute. Maybe there are some questions. And otherwise, I will be in the Hangout and um, stop sharing. So. All right, everyone. Uh, I mean, if you have questions for Juta, that uh, now is the right time. Uh, to to ask her yeah and and thanks Judah for you know, sharing your experiences with with us today. Mm -hmm.